All right, today we're going to talk about moles to grams and grams to moles calculations. And this is, um, this is something that's really important in chemistry because um, it, we can't measure a mole on a balance, but we can definitely measure a gram on a balance. And so we can figure out, um, we can figure out some, um, some actual measurements, and, and that's a useful for a chemist. We can place substances on a balance. And we measure them out, add them in the water. We do a lot of different calculations for that. So, um, so the first thing we should talk about is is our first equality, and this is our equality. And make sure you jot this down in your notes. And one mole, we know from before that one mole is equal to Avogadro's number of particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, one mole can also be a equal to another value, and that's going to be the molar mass of any substance. And in a previous um, uh, video, you learned how to calculate molar mass of substance, but we're going to do a quick little review of that right now. Um, let's make sure we got it, because we have to know how to do that before we can go on and do mole calculation. Also, um, you'll need a periodic table out, and you're going to need what we call a mole road map out. And I gave you a hand out of this in class, and if you don't have one of those because you're at home right now and you're watching this, um, I'll send one out on Google Classroom so you can take a look at it there. So our first example here is we're going to be asked to calculate the molar mass of water. So just as a review for you, and I know a lot of you know how to do this already, but um, water has a formula of H2O. And we know that this 2 here belongs to the H, and so that gives us two hydrogens. So we're going to take the number 2 and we're going to multiply it by the molar mass of hydrogen. Now I look on the periodic table, the molar mass is the bottom number typically, and for hydrogen it is 1.01. .01. Then I'm going to add that to my one oxygen here. So I have 1 times oxygen, which I'm not going to have to write. So I'm just going to write 16.0 for the oxygen. So that's how I set my problem up for the calculating the molar mass of water. There's my oxygen, and then there's my two hydrogens. And so we calculate this out, and we're going to get 18.02 and our unit is going to be grams and this is going to be equal or going to be equal to a mole so if I had a mole of water I'd have 18 grams of water and if I had 18 grams of water I'd have a mole of water so I could ask you to measure out a mole of water and you would just measure out 18 grams of water okay let's do another one it's a little bit more complicated calculate the molar mass of calcium phosphate calcium phosphate CA3 PO4 parentheses with a 2 on the outside now just as a reminder to you, this 3 that's right here just belongs to the calcium. So we have three calciums. So we're going to set this problem up. We'll start from the beginning, and we're going to do calcium first. So I'm going to do 3 multiplied by the molar mass of calcium. So I looked that up on uh, the periodic table, and it's 40.08. That's for my calcium, and so I'm done with that calcium now. And now I'm going to go on to my phosphorus, which is inside. Now, I do have a 2 here. I need to distribute it through to the phosphorus, so that's going to give us 2 phosphorus. 2 times the molar mass of phosphorus, 30.97. And we're going to add that to this 2 again, distributes through to the oxygen, because there's already 4 in there. It's going to be 4 times 2, so it's going to give me 8 oxygens. Oxygen's molar mass is 16. And then I'm going to go through, and I'm going to I'm going to punch this into my calculator in just this way. And the answer I got there is I got 310.18 grams, which are going to be equal to one mole of calcium phosphate. So if I had 310 grams of calcium, 0.18 grams, I'd have a mole of it. All right, all right. Well, now what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how to do um, mole calculations. And we're going to use the mole road as, as one way to get get us through this, or, or some other students just like to use what's called unit analysis or dimensional analysis, and either way is fine. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to treat this problem just like we always treat a problem. And the problem says calculate the number of grams of 2.5 moles of calcium nitrate. Now, so first thing I want to do is I want to identify my known quantity, my known. And my known is always the value that they gave me. So it's 2.5 moles. That's my known value. And so I'm going to write a long line like this, and I'm going to put my known value here, 2.5 moles of calcium nitrate, just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to identify what I'm looking for, what am I after, what am I trying to find. So it says calculate the number of grams. Okay, so I'm trying to find grams. So I'm going to put grams right here. Okay. Now, the, the nice thing about using the mole road 
is it's going to tell me where I want to start and where I want to end, just like any map would. And so the starting point on the mole road will be my will be my known. And my ending point on the mole road will be my unknown. Okay, so let's kind of scroll down here to the mole road and talk about this. So it told me here that I'm starting at moles. So I'm starting right here in the middle at moles. And it tells me I'm ending at grams. Well, grams is mass, so I'm ending right there. Okay, okay. So this tells me right here, because you notice these arrows are pointing down, that is what I'm going to put right up there um, to um, solve this problem. And so let's do that. So I'm going to put, it says one mole on the bottom. And then down there it says atomic mass on the top, which is just another name for molar mass. Molar mass and atomic mass basically mean the same thing. So who are we going to do the molar mass for? Well, it's for grams of calcium nitrate, because that's who we were talking about here. So what I have to do is I have to calculate the molar mass of calcium nitrate and I'm going to place it right there. So this is kind of a two-part problem. So let's do that real quickly. So calcium, calcium, um, we just have one of them and calcium's molar mass is 40.08 and we're going to add that to, oops I forgot a two out there, we're going to add that to our nitrogens and we distribute that two through so we have two times nitrogen which is 14.01 plus we have six oxygens, six times 16, just like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to calculate this answer and then I'm going to plug it into my, um, my setup. Well, when I ran it through my calculator, I got 164.1 grams and I'm going to take that value and I'm going to put it in right here, 164.1, because that's grams and that's grams right there. And so now we just have a multiplication problem. We've set it up just like we normally set up mole problems. And we're going we're gonna to cancel out moles and moles. And so we're going to go 2.5 times 164.1. And the answer comes out to be 410, we'll call it 0.3 grams of calcium nitrate. And that's our answer. So if you have 2.5 moles, you would have to measure out 410.3 grams of calcium nitrate. And that's how you do that problem using the mole road. Okay, let me scroll down here. We have another example for you. And the next one is calculate the number of moles in 55 grams of potassium nitrate. So again, first thing we want to do is we want to identify our known. And our known is 55 grams of potassium nitrate. So I'm going to go like this. 55 grams of potassium nitrate. And then we want to identify our unknown. What are we looking for? Calculate the number of moles. So we're looking for moles. So I'm going to write moles right over here. Moles. Okay? So, again, we can use the mole road. This tells us where to start on the mole road. We're going to start at grams. This tells us where to end on the mole road. We're going to end at moles. So let's go down here and look and see here. So we're going to start at grams right here and we're going to end at moles right there. So essentially we're going up the road this way and we're going to use this conversion factor. One mole over the atomic mass. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place one mole over the atomic mass or grams of KNO3 and notice that that's the same unit as that unit there. So we have all we have to do is calculate the atomic mass of potassium nitrate or the molar mass of potassium nitrate. So we have one potassium which is 39.10 plus one nitrogen which is 14.01 plus we're going to multiply in three oxygens, three times 16 parentheses and I get 101.11. Now this problem grams cancels with grams and it becomes a division problem. I'm, I punch into my calculator 55 divided by 1.01 and I hit equal and I get 0 0.5 we're going to call it 4. I'm going to round it off to two sig figs because my known was two sig figs and the unit is moles of KNO3 which is about a half a mole which sort of makes sense because if one mole is 101.1 55 is roughly a little bit more than half of a mole. 
And so that answer kind of makes sense. And that's how we do mole problems.